Hello, welcome to 5.2. Um, as promised, uh, if this is something a lot more practical. This is a, um, a, an interview with a real person, a real person working in rehab. <laughs> uh, this is Ella. Ella's the manager of uh, rehab management in the Hunter Valley. Um, so looking after a number of um, agencies up here, a number of outlets. Um, but I'll get her to talk a little bit about her background and her role and um, how she found herself where she is. Uh, so in my background, I actually started, my undergrad was psych. I did a psych degree, did my supervision, um, but didn't actually enjoy it. I didn't yeah, okay. enjoy the clinical side of things. Not what you thought it would be? Or no, or no? I, I guess, you know, when you go into university and you have all these big dreams of, you know, oh, I'm going to be a forensic psychologist, <laughs> I'm going to go work in the prisons. It'd be like CSI. Exactly, <laughs> yep, but um, it didn't, it just didn't work out that way. My yeah. first role was actually in um, rehab, yep. rehab, so I worked for another company back then. We don't have to name them. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and I worked, initially I was working as a, a provisionally registered psychologist, yep. but the process for supervision was just so arduous. In, in um, rehab as opposed to another field? Yep. Yeah, yep. Okay. yep. Very difficult in mm. rehab to get your supervision. Yep. Um, and so I went the ASORC pathway in yep. the end, and, and I've never regretted it. I've always I've loved yeah. it. Um, so I went from a rehab provider straight to Alliance. Workers' Comp. Oh, yes. And I worked what there for 12 with, years. What was your role with them? I started as an injury coordinator. Yep. Uh, then we amalgamated the roles and went to case managers and yep. then worked my way up to injury management specialist. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah so. okay. There's so many different titles that you come across. Different different yeah. people have different titles. Is, is injury manager similar to rehab consultant or is it... Uh, injury management... Injury management is more around uh, the medical aspect of the case. Yep. So, um, like they have technical specialists, an injury management specialist is really around the medical, the medical side of the case, around yep. um, approving it'll, for anything from approving surgeries right the way through to approving rehab referrals, cost yep. management around medical services, treatment plan approval, all of those okay. sorts of things. Okay. So do you have some involvement with the vocational side also? Definitely. Yeah. yeah, definitely. So uh, the injury management specialist will actually look at the vocational assessment reports yep. and actually make sure that they are in line with the needs of the claim okay. and make sure that they are appropriate to help support, say, a work, yep. a, a work capacity decision. Mm. That would be a great perspective having seen all the various vocational assessment reports yeah. coming across your desk. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Uh, before I left Allianz, I actually moved into the work capacity team as a work capacity specialist yep. so I then had lots of exposure to all different types of vocational assessment yeah, okay. reports. so it was yeah, very, very cool. interesting looking and, uh, at uh, how the rehab I guess how the rehab framework supports uh, the decisions that are being made from a workers comp perspective yeah did you form any views while you were there about how it does support or otherwise um it really is I guess the the I guess an outcome is very much based on how good your rehab consultant is, yep. to be honest. Um, I think that a, re a good rehab consultant um, can really make a, good, yep. a workers' comp or work capacity decision, but uh, if you have one that's not very thorough or not yep. very engaged, not very proactive, yep. it can really break the process okay. um, in terms of not being able to uh, move someone on or find them a good outcome or even make a work capacity decision from the, from okay. the insurer's perspective. So just so the guys are across it, so, so the work capacity is, is, a, is a, a point in time in a claim where they're, just, where they're trying to decide into the future whether someone's got yep. a capacity to work, That's it. which is a little academic I suppose, it's a little bit different from actually yeah. placing someone in a job. It's very different, yeah. so it's, um, it's, it's basically what they call the end game. Yep. Um, so an insurer's main motivation will always be return mm. to work, return to health. Yep. Um, that will be number one goal, you know, throughout the life of the claim. Yep. Um, but towards the end of the claim, I guess, when everything's been exhausted, we've tried whatever we can to sort of get that person back to work or find a new role or a new vocation, um, we look at work capacity decisions and the insurer yep. will gather evidence then to demonstrate that worker's capacity for work. Okay. So workers' comp is a little different to some other schemes in the sense that if whatever they do during the time that they're on work, workers' comp, you can include in a capacity decision. That's right. Yeah, whereas other schemes like life insurance, it's whatever skills you've got at the time. That's exactly You're injured. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So, so there's dual goals, I suppose. You're either That's trying it. to get someone placed in work or... Yep trying to improve their capacity. Exactly. So they're um, I really, with my rehab counsellors here at Rehab Management, I really try to, I guess, emphasise that our role here is to maximise people potential. Yep. So whether that is, you know, you take that person as you find them, 
but it's really then looking at the skills, looking at their functional capacity and trying to maximise the potential for employment with okay. what they've already got yep. and then maybe adding a few skills along the way here and there too, whether it's you know doing a, com- a computer course or yep. you know whatever it might be that will actually make them a little bit more okay. um, sellable. Right. It's, it's too good an <laughs> opportunity because you've gone down this path. But it, it sounds like you've got people in two places. They're either ready to be placed or they've got all the things to be placed mm-hmm. except for something. Yeah. What's that something? What's the something those guys are missing? Do you it, think? I think the I think we a lot of the clients that we see um, have come from one particular industry. They've worked in that particular industry for a long time. We yep. see a lot of I guess middle aged ma- male yep. uh, injured workers, yep. and they've worked as a boiler maker for their entire career, yep. and so have never really thought outside of just boiler making just welding yeah um and so they get to this point in their life where they've had an injury and they physically cannot continue to weld because yeah. of the heavy lifting or whatever is required yeah. and so it's about really looking at that person in terms of what other transferable skills do they have yeah. um, within their little bag of tools yep. that we can apply to other other professions or other areas so you know it may be that we need to get them some customer service experience so yep. we look at some work tri- a work trial maybe with a yep. local hardware store because these guys are very hands on okay. they know they know their tools yeah, the they tools know their a connection there that's yeah. it so it's a, it's a place they feel comfortable that's I guess, it yeah. that's it so it's still that trade based mm. environment but they they're more a consultant in that they're advising other tradespersons yep. on what they can use and what they can purchase. Okay. Um, it might be just, like I said before, some basic computer skills. You mm. know, they've never worked a cash register before. Yep. Um, so, you know, it may be just getting them some exposure to the computer okay. in terms of setting up an email account and those yep. basic functions. Okay. So there's, all that stuff sounds familiar. That's the <laughs> stuff that rehab counsellors do. Mm-hmm. Is it? So you obviously have rehab counsellors here because of that special skill That's right. they can provide. So what, yep. what would be a, you know, a case comes into the service, what would be the decision around making it, uh, it's a, it goes to a rehab counsellor? Yeah, um, it's usually, I like to, uh, most, there are two two decisions that mm. I make. The first one, I I like to assign cases with a psych background, so, yeah. you know, psychological injury cases to oh, people yeah. with a mental health So that's type returning focus. to the same employer? Yep, so yep. That's, that's your psychologist so my guys in do, yep, yep, so my guys do same employer and new employer services. Okay. Um, that's so good. That's, that's, more, that's more interesting work for those. Yeah, guys. that's yeah. it because it gets a little bit tedious yeah. doing yeah. one type of work all the time, and yeah. so it gives them a bit of variety. So they will get those cases. Um, but in terms of, I guess the the bulk of work that rehab counsellors get, it will yeah. be the new employer services. So yeah, okay. it'll come in the person's already job detached or yeah. about to be job detached, yeah. and it's about doing that initial vo- vocational assessment to determine what kind of goals we can set for okay. that person to get. Right. In all your experience, have you got any general observations around you know what, who who is ten, who tends to be successful and who doesn't? Because I think the goal is about fifty percent, isn't it? You got yeah. The, you know, yeah. The, the industry standard is that about fifty percent will go back to work. That's right. Yeah. It's um different employer is not easy. Yeah. It's a very challenging uh, scheme to work within. Yeah. Um, and I think the people who are the most successful are the ones that. I guess don't enable behaviours. Yep. Um, we see a lot of, I guess a lot of clinicians go into a counselling or psychology type role uh, to support and to nurture. Yep. Um, and I think that in this industry, it's very important to know the difference between supporting yep. and enabling. Yeah, it's okay. a very yep. fine line. Yep. Um, it's very easy to, I guess, be that be someone's emotional crutch. Yep. But in this role, I think it's very important to be very strong mm. in terms of this is what we're trying to achieve, these are the goals we're trying to work towards and try to continue to push that person yeah, okay. outside of their comfort zone a little bit yep. um, because what we want is growth. We yep. want that person to grow um, as a human being yep. and they won't do that if, unless we're challenging them a little bit as okay. well. So, so it's, we've talked a bit about... Um, you know, people grieve, you know, like they grieve for That's anything. Right. They're grieving for the loss of function and they're grieving for the loss of a career they had and yeah. it was all taken away from them. Uh, and then there's elements of, you know, secondary gain, you know, there's a pot of gold at the end of the That's rainbow. Right. Yeah. So these are the sort of things you're talking about. This is yeah. the stuff you've got to work with. That's it. Not enable. Yeah, so it's, it's there's very, a big adjustment counselling mm. component to yep. helping someone through moving from a, a role that they were in for quite some time into a completely new field. Yep. Can't work.
work there anymore. This was my career. Yeah. You know, we've seen, we see lots of different examples of people who are completely heartbroken because the role that they were doing, they loved yeah. and they can't do that anymore yeah. because they're physically, they physically or emotionally mm. can't sustain that role Sometimes anymore. Sometimes at a blink of an eye. That's yeah. right. And so, you know, helping those people to adjust mm. to their new circumstances, just as, just as you would helping them to adjust to their injury as well. It's yep. not just about adjusting to the possibility of a new career, but it's also that yeah. I have this limitation now that yeah. is going to affect my before. ability to hmm. move forward. Yep. Um, so we call ourselves rehab counsellors, and I think sometimes when people look at this career, they think, um, you know, they think of the counselling aspect of it. Yep. Is, is it a formal counselling? Are you rolling in the couch in and having people lie down? Or is no. it, <laughs> how, how does the counselling part work? Because you talked about adjustment. Um, yeah, so the counselling part is really, informal yep. it's um it's just through your everyday interactions with people and yep. it's and it's i guess you know listening to what people have to say um but then also sort of giving them tools practical tools to be able to help them move through certain yep. situations i think um it's really important for i guess rehab counselors to understand that they're always in that counseling role yep. um they ne it never switches off you're yep. always helping to move someone forward that's yep. the goal um, and it's not about laying on a couch and asking them <laughs> to tell you about their childhood or yeah. their past traumas. Yeah. Um, sometimes that is relevant, yeah. um, but more often than not, it's yeah. not. <laughs> yeah. okay. I think that's a good perspective. I think I think people coming into it thinking it's going to be lots of uh, you know sitting down. Even meaningful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's that practical. You know, as things yeah. are happening in front of you. Yeah. Um, so we talked about we've talked about um, rehab counsellors' role, um, but they've also got a, a case management role. Yes. In a, in a service like yours. Yeah. How how does that balance? What's the balance between those two? Uh, it's probably fifty fifty really. Yeah. Um, they do a lot of face to face contact with the injured people, mm -hmm. um, but there is a lot of back behind the scenes work as well. So, you know, um, coming putting together reports, yep. um, communication with the insurer, so the insurer yep. case manager, making sure that they're up to date on what's going on and what progress has been made on the case. Yep. Um, also speaking to, I guess, uh, external treatment providers as well. So, yep. you know, whoever the injured worker has engaged, a treating doctor, treating psychologist, it might be yep. a physio, an exercise physiologist, an OT, yep. um, and just making sure that those services are being, I guess, utilised effectively and that everyone's talking to each other. Yep. That's probably the biggest role that we have from a non-therapeutic perspective is that coordination between all the parties and making sure okay. communication is... Uh, Paramount. Okay. All right. Yeah. And about 50 50, you reckon? Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Okay. Because you talked about helping people move through, and I've sometimes, I often think in terms of the case management part is also about creating mm. momentum as well as, yeah, you know, I totally agree. Unblocking yeah. things moving forward. That's right. Make sure everyone's got the information they need. Yeah. yeah. And I guess, too, being on this side of the fence, on the rehab side of the fence, you will come up against people. You're working with people. You're working with human beings. Yep. Um, everyone has have their own little quirks and yep. eccentricities, yep. Um, and they all have their different personality traits as well. And so finding out how to work within those yep. those arenas as well is quite challenging because you need to be able to be a people person yes. to be able to, I guess, deconstruct a lot of what's going on. So. Yep. Um, I'm always telling my guys that the, the best tool that they have mm. is to understand someone's motivation. Yep. Um, and whether that's the case manager, whether that's the injured worker, whether it's the doctor, everyone has their own agenda. Yep, yep. And if you, the better you can understand that, the mm. more likely you will be to get a successful outcome. Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a great way to put it, actually, about the motivation. Mm. I think one of my first year lecturers, I think at the end of a, a lecture on motivation, he played down Rolling Stones can't get no satisfaction. <laughs> <laughs> it does feel like we become the meat in the sandwich quite often, yep. unfortunately. But um, you know, it's just about trying to balance expectations and yep. making sure that we're we're doing what we need to be. Okay, doing. Yep. and it's probably not a simple question, but but in in that then, just touching on what you're saying, who's the, who's the client then for you? Oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> um, so for us, um, we call the injured worker the yep. client. Yep. Um, and we call the case manager or the insurer the customer. Okay. Yep. So the customer is who pays our accounts. Yep. The client is the person that we're trying to help, okay. basically. Yep. So it's very, a, a lot of my new grad rehab counsellors mm. struggle with this concept to begin with. And it, and it is difficult because that duty of care, where does it lie when one person's paying your accounts yep. and the other person is the actual one receiving the service? Yeah. Um, and it can be, it can be quite challenging for, mm. for a new grad rehab counsellor to work out where their 
um, I guess, alliances yeah. lie. Yeah, it's um, a very client-centred, uh, you know, the yeah. philosophy that gets um, pressed on the community. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. so I guess, you know, in terms of, this, I guess, the workers' comp scheme, the, the scheme is designed, it's, it's not always effective, mm. you know, it, everything has flaws, but it's designed to achieve the best outcome for an individual who has sustained an injury. Yeah. That's the way it's designed. So I guess I try to, you know, I try to encourage my guys to find the best outcome for that person yeah. within the constraints of what this insurance company case manager is asking you to yes. do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, I, mean, I think it's fair to say, I mean, like, rehab counsellors, it's good to be familiar with, but you don't always know a lot about the way the, the premiums are set. But, um, but, you know, really back to work is best for everyone. Yeah, Best That's for right. the worker, best for the insurance That's company, it. best for That's the scheme. exactly right. Yeah. That's brilliant. Well, thank you so much for taking the time right. to go through all that. Do you want to shout out to anyone in particular? Uh, Louise Black. <laughs> Louise Black is not only a student here, but also an employee here. So, yeah. hello, Louise. I'm just down the hall. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I really appreciate that. No worries. My pleasure.